For two-dimensional robots or polygonal robots, we need the concept of configuration space. To define that, however, we also need the concept of a degree of freedom. Every robot that you can choose has some number of degrees of freedom. That is, its configurations with respect to the world can be specified by that many parameters. For example, if we have a translating robot in 2D, so it can move around, but it cannot rotate, then we have two degrees of freedom, because we can move horizontally and vertically. If it can also rotate, then there are three degrees of freedom, because now in addition to the two-dimensional translation, we also have the one-dimensional rotation. So we can describe the movement by three parameters. How much did we move horizontally, how much did we move vertically, and by how many degrees did we rotate. The same way if we have a three-dimensional robot that can only translate, then we have three degrees of freedom. With rotation, however, we now have five degrees of freedom. Because the rotation can again be in the x-axis and on a second axis. So we can rotate horizontally or we can rotate vertically and we can combine them together. So here we have five degrees of freedom. Now what does this do for our so-called configuration space? In the following we assume that we have this model here, we have a 2D translating robot. For example, you can imagine that you have some robotic arm that moves in some field. And then it would not rotate, but it will always have the same shape. The configuration space is now the d-dimensional space of all possible parameter value combinations. So for our model, since we have two degrees of freedom, it's a two-dimensional space. And it's all those parameter value combinations that are possible. That means they avoid the obstacles. That means that if we have our robot here and the obstacle there, that they don't intersect. In order to define that, we have to have a reference point for our robot. And now this will give us all the points in the plane where we can place the robot or where we can place the reference point of the robot such that we don't intersect the obstacles. And this is exactly the configuration space. The workspace is what we get as the input, and the configuration space will maybe look like this. All the points that are not inside the orange region, they are valid for our robot. And how the shape looks like, that depends on the obstacles, and we still have to figure out how to compute it. But for all the points outside here, we can place the robot at this point with its reference point and we are fine. And so what we want to do is we want to find a path for our point through the configuration space. If we can find a path here for a single point, then the robot can move along this path and not hit any obstacles. So we can reduce it to the first simple problem where we only have point robots. For an example, if we have the 2D to polygonal robot, then we have three positions here. In the origin, at this position it doesn't intersect the obstacle, and at this position it does intersect the obstacle. Now how should the configuration space look like? For both these polygons, we have to create a larger polygon. And that will be our configuration polygon. The configuration polygon that contains all the points in the plane such that if we place the robot there, then it will intersect our obstacle. So in this example here, this will be this orange region for polygon 1 and this orange region for polygon 2. As you can see, if we put the robot here, then we have an intersection, so this has to lie in the configuration polygon. And if we take the union of all those configuration polygons, then we get the forbidden space. This is our forbidden area. Our robot is never allowed to get inside this area, or the reference point is never allowed to get inside this area. And the complement of this, this is the free space. 
In this we can freely move. So we want to find a path in the free space from our starting position to our end position as a point robot. And if we have a path here, then we have a collision-free path in the workspace that will look like this.